Kids' brains are a phenomenal piece of tech. I have a three-year-old at home, and it would seem sometimes that the only thing that can limit the capacity of her brain and how she develops is actually the self-doubt of her parents, me, her mom, her grandma. Sadly, for some kids, the legacy that their parents leave behind include those limitations that the parents have on themselves, which become the limitations on what the kid themselves believes that they can do. Now, I've talked about my grandfather a lot over the years, whether it's in my TED Talks or in my clips or in my Minecraft program. My grandfather spoke over 11 languages and he taught me how to learn languages. But it wasn't just language, it was computer coding and it was also other things from Rubik's Cube to Morse code. He was a radio operator in the Second World War. And one of the things that we did when I was a kid was not only learn how to build the circuits for transceivers and listening to radios, but he also taught me Morse code. Now I've mentioned when I was a kid, he would teach me did it, did it, did it, and we'd send Morse to each other under the table, just playing games. But when I look back, I see that this ability to use Morse code and understand patterns and pattern matching is possibly one of the key ingredients that led to my ability in languages later on. I'll tell you why. Morse code on the outset, it just seems pretty bland. Black, white, binary, one, zero, dots and dashes. Dip, short, da, long. Di, da, that's A, short, long. And you think, yeah, so I'm going to have to listen to every word as it's spelt out. This is the amazing thing. Now, we all know that computers speak in zeros and ones, binary, either on or off. And that's very similar to Morse code. But when you look at the screen on your computer, on your mobile phone, you're not seeing ones and zeros. You're seeing full pictures. You're seeing movies. You're hearing sound. You're getting the experience. And that's exactly what happens with Morse code. There's something that fundamentally shifts in your brain once you get the basics down. And then these dots and dashes start turning into words, start turning into meanings. And very soon you're not hearing the dots and dashes, just like you zoom out from a screen. Rather than seeing the pixels, you're actually feeling the meanings of what these dots and dashes are actually doing. This was one of the first clips that I posted to YouTube in the early days. I did this in 2008, my channel started in 2007, but I wrote a song to teach Morse code and ASL sign language simultaneously. Now, everything in this clip is intentional. Now, I admit, for editing standards compared to today, it's pretty bad. But put that aside, because fundamentally, it still works. And I've actually been using this clip with my three-year-old lately, and it's been having some amazing results in both sign language and Morse code and language in general. So what I'd say is, watch this clip now, watch it to the end. As you see my mouth move, you say the words over my mouth. I intentionally didn't put my voice in there. I want you to hear your voice in your head. You ready? Let's go.
How was that? Pretty retro, huh? But are you feeling it? Now let's do it once more from the beginning to the end. Do the hand signs and say the words over my mouth so that you're locked into time. I've actually written this at 120 beats per minute because that's going to be a great speed to put your brain into alpha state. And soon you're going to be doing these things without really having to be thinking about it. And then I also, you'll see that I have my picture and then the thing that it's linked to, I'm using white space, color, contrast, and a whole bunch of other things to link into each other. And then also listen for these solos. The solos are actually encoded as well. Can you break the code? Take two. How did you go? How was your recall? I've found that if people watch this clip about three, four times and do it and really get into the zone, they have a very good recall rate, probably around 90% to 100% ability to recall. I've done this with schools, with whole groups of kids, and the kids tend to catch on a lot faster. I know my daughter did, and now we sit at the dinner table, and I take it a step further than from my grandfather. I'll actually have my finger on her arm as she's eating breakfast, and I'll go like this. And she'll say, apple, bees in a hive. I give that framework. And then I'll do something like, dog's behind, egg, that's E, egg. And now she's knowing, not just from the sounds, but just the feeling. How is this going to link into her language development? I'm not sure. But right now at three years old, she can at least count in Italian, French, Chinese, Mandarin, Vietnamese, Thai, of course, she speaks Thai, English and Indonesian and she can switch between them very easily. Not only that, I can teach her a new set of numbers or in a new system probably in about 10 minutes and she'll have it down. It's a very similar way to the way that I've set this down. Once you have a framework to drop things in, you can put new things that are related to that framework and they're going to be much easier to recall. In my Minecraft program, I designed that more for adults, but kids do it as well. We actually go first. And so I use a tool that even the military uses when they train their people in Morse code. So you can actually start hearing words and full sentences. And we build it up little bit by little bit. But I know the feedback from the people in my Minecraft program. They never expected this to sort of do anything for them. But they saw these profound differences in the way that they were able to use their brain. They found that once they had the fundamentals of the alphabet, then they would switch their brain off, just let it do its job. And amazingly, things would start to fall in place, not only with Morse code, but also with the new languages that they were learning. They would be able to listen, have it embedded in here, and then this language would naturally start to come out of them in a natural manner. So anyway, I'm going to play this clip one more time before the end of the clip. Have a listen and try and go through it again. Feel free to go back and keep playing it over and over until you get this recall. At the very least, you're going to have the Morse code and one-handed ASL sign language alphabet. And if you want to learn more, come and enroll in Minecraft and you'll be able to take it to the next level and then incorporate these fundamental skills into your language learning, no matter what language it is. So here we go. Take three. I'm Stuart J. Raj. I'll see you on the other side.